today we're going to examine insects and we're gonna go for a bug hunt. But first we have to figure out what a bug even is. So here I have two of my insects. And how you can identify an insect is by looking at its body. So here on my B, we're gonna count the body parts. And we have one, two, three body parts. So we have our head, our head, our thorax, which is this area, it's called our thoracic cavity, and our abdomen, which is way down here in our tummies. And that holds all of our digestive system and a whole bunch of other good organs. And insects have those one, two, three body parts. Insects also have are three pairs of legs. So they have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six legs. They also have antenna on their head. So this is our bee, and this is our praying mantis. So we have, can you guys identify the three parts? We have one, up here we have our head, two, here we have our thorax, and three, here we have our abdomen. And can you count how many legs it has? One, two, three, four, five, six, just like the bee. And can you find the antenna? Right here. So both of these, even though they look very different from each other, are both insects. Insects also have something called compound eyes. And here in our eyes, in a human eye, we only have one lens per eye. But in an insect, they have many, many lenses per eye. So here I have my bug eye that kind of gives you an idea of what bugs must see like. So I'm gonna put this up here. You can see how there's all sorts of different sections to this. And all of those different lenses work together to create an image in the insect's brain. So they're able to see effectively and efficiently. So now that we know the parts of an insect, now we're going to go out and hunt for some. So we're gonna look in some fields, under some rocks, and in some forests to see what different types of insects we can find. So we can look out in our own backyards and in our own gardens and take a look and see what sort of cool insects we can find in our own areas. Here, I have already found an insect home of this guy. He is a spittle bug, and you can identify spittle bugs pretty easily. It looks like a bug went choo, on a plant. It's all foamy and bubbly, but that foamy and bubbly house keeps them nice and safe as they grow. So here we can even already start to see that bug inside. So let's go in, and this guy, He's called a leaf hopper. And he's gonna grow up to hop from leaf to leaf searching for food. But right now, he wants to stay nice and safe and cool inside of his spit house. So let's put him back inside, make sure he's nice and safe. One good way to start your insect hunt is to look for insect homes. And that might give you an idea of where an insect lives and you can check and see if it's home or not. For example, I found this super cool web. And who lives on a web? A spider. So we're gonna take a look here on the web and see if we can find anyone at home. I need to hold it still because it's super windy. Do you see anyone? 
Whoa, using my magnifier here, I think I found another cool insect. Here we can see this guy. Using his amazing ability of camouflage, I almost walked right past him. Can you find him? This moth is using his amazing coloration to blend in with the tree around him so that he is going to avoid being predated upon or hunted by other types of animals like birds or maybe some other insects. Uh-oh, I think I found a bad bug. Do you guys know what this is? This is a spotted lanternfly nymph. You can identify them by black with tiny white spots. They really enjoy hanging out on grapes. So you can see this vine here. Oh my goodness, and if you look up real high, you can see all sorts of little black dots on the undersides of these leaves. And those are all the little spotted lanternfly nymphs. Here I see a wasp eating a grub. How amazing. Have you ever watched a wasp eat before? Wasps may be really scary at first, but they can actually be really, really beneficial. They help in a small way to pollinate and they also can be beneficial in the ecosystem as they will eat other little creatures and insects that we may not want around. So after all, wasps can be pretty cool. Great place to search for pollinating bugs is in a garden. They love the flowers here. Can you imagine being an insect and trying to figure out how to climb and fly around these flowers on a windy day? But these guys know what they're doing. And they are busy, busy, busy pollinating. There are many different types of bees and other insects that help to pollinate out in your garden. Have you ever taken the time to count them? Here again, we see some more types of pollinators. Can you find the head, thorax, and abdomen of these insects? This field's meadow area is a great spot to search out insects and see who's living here in these tall grasses. So what you're going to need to do that is some good observation skills, maybe even a sweep net and a bug box so that you can collect them. So let's take a look here. And I see lots of thorns, things with spines, and I know that is going to tear holes inside of my sweep net. So, I'm going to go to a place that's more just grass. And I'm going to sweep there. 
Oop, I see milkweed. Milkweed is really great for pollinators like butterflies, bumblebees. I think I see a milkweed beetle. This guy specializes in eating milkweeds. He munches, munches, munches on them. This guy has chewing mouth parts as compared to butterflies who have sucking mouth parts. He's going to do lots of chewing here. Okay, so I have spotted a milkweed beetle here, and I would like to use my bug box here to see if I can try to catch it. Here we go, I've got him! So, you can see through this magnifying top, the milkweed beetle, a little more up close. Can you find his three body parts, six legs, and antenna? All right, now it's upside down. Let's flip him over, making sure that I keep my fingers nice and tight on the lid so he doesn't fall out. What other insects are red and black? And as always, when we're done observing, we should let them go back where they came from. Enjoy, little bug. Escape. Ah. There he goes, back to the wild. Okay, so now that I have found a grassy spot here, I'm going to use my sweep net to try to catch some insects. The cool thing about a sweep net is that all it takes is just some sweeping movements. You don't have to smack down or smash any of the insects. And it's amazing with just one or two sweeps how many cool insects you can find. All right, let's sweep. So we just go to the grass. Now, you see who we've got in our net. Okay, so I see, even if at first you don't think you have anybody in your net, maybe you do. They might just be really tiny, like that little guy right there. Did you know that you can count cricket chirps to find the temperature? Count for 15 seconds and add 37. When I counted, I got a total of 86 degrees outside, and when I checked the actual temperature, it was 81. Not too bad. With crickets chirping so fast, it's easy to miscount. How did you do? Can you spot the little bug trying to hide in this yarrow? Let's see if I can get him in the box. Okay, I got him. How cool. So you can see he's really tiny, has some amazing colorations, and was hiding there in the yarrow. Looking at color and patterns is a really good way to try to identify the insect or bug that you have. So he does have antenna. Oh, and there he just opened his wings for me. And all of those key features will help me be able to identify this bug later. Let's let him go. Go home, bug. So we were just in the meadow, and now we're gonna head into the woods here 
to see what sort of insects like to live under the rocks and logs of the cool shady forest. You may not know what every bug and insect is, and that's okay. Again, use the colors and the patterns of the insect, if you can find any body parts, to help you identify it. Going online and searching or using a field guide can be really, really helpful. Keep in mind, not all insects are really big like butterflies or wasps. Some may be really small, like these beetles here. Whoa, see this dude here on the underside of a milkweed leaf? Is he a true bug? How many legs does he have? Can you count how many body parts he's got? Here's another cool bug. Looks kind of similar to the milkweed beetle, except I can tell that it's not based off of its identifying features like its coloration and patterns. It's not that reddish color with the black spots like the milkweed bug was. We'll have to go back into our field guide when we're done, see if we can identify them. Another really fun place to look for insects is under rocks. Living under rocks helps to keep them nice and cool and protected from things that may want to eat them. So let's take a look. We're gonna gently flip this rock back and peek under and see who we find and whoa! Don't necessarily see an insect, but who is that? Whoa! That is a pretty cool looking slug there. Well, he's not an insect. Do you see three body parts, antenna, and six legs? I don't think so. So we know he's not an insect. You never know who you're gonna find under the rocks as you explore. It's really exciting to pick up a rock and find a whole civilization living underneath. After you're done picking up the rock and checking out underneath of it, you want to make sure that you put it back gently where it was. That way any of the insects feel like they have the ceiling or their roof of their home back and they feel protected. But you do want to make sure that you are nice and gentle so as not to squish anyone. The forest is a great place to look for things. So we're going to look under rocks and logs to see who might live here. So let's go and we'll flip up this rock. And just like before, we want to be very gentle and very careful. And who do we find? Whoa! a whole host of ants. And again, we want to put it back gently when we're done. Who else can we find here? Let's roll over this log and see who we've got. So we're going to roll always, you want to roll towards you, you don't want to roll away because something might be under that gets really scared. And you want it to go away from you, not towards you if it's something that could be potentially harmful. Seeing, we've got more slugs. Lots more slugs. Do you see any insects? Oh, and if you look really close, maybe they're just super tiny. There's one, some really tiny, tiny ones. These insects that are really tiny, that live under decaying logs, can be beneficial decomposers 
that help turn fallen logs and trees into really nice soil filled with wonderful nutrients. And hello, fly. Good timing. Whoa. Flipped over this rock. Found some pretty cool insects and ants carrying their eggs around. They got a little scared when I opened their home up. So now they're moving things around to help protect them. Let's put that back. When you're done with your hike, you're gonna want to make sure that you check your, your hair, your clothes, your shorts, your pants, socks and shoes. You're gonna wanna make sure that you check for ticks. This year has been really crazy with ticks and so you wanna make sure that you check. They are not insects. And if you do find a tick, maybe see if you can observe it for a little bit. See if you can see how many legs it has, how many body parts. Maybe surprised to find out it's not an insect after all. <laughs>